about the benefits of LADWP solar rooftop, feed and tear up, or FIT program for short. And you'll learn how to turn your, sol your rooftop into a revenue generator that provides clean energy to the LA region. For the past decade, the LA Business Council has championed the development, the evaluation and the expansion of this program. It's created thousands of new jobs and millions of dollars of new investment to small and medium businesses while reducing significant amounts of CO2 and toxins from the air, improving the health of Angelinos. The FIP program was adopted back in 2013 with a 150 megawatt program. There are now over 100 solar roof installations completed and over 120 more contracted or in the process. These projects are on multifamily, commercial and industrial roofs all over Los Angeles. The program has been very successful and DWP plans on doing a total of 250 megawatts of new solar fit and 50 megawatt tranches for a total of 450 megawatts over the next several years. This will be the most amount of solar fit anywhere in the United States. The LABC has a long history working in the Northeast Valley, San Fernando Valley with our coalition partners. We've worked to reduce health impacts resulting from incompatible land uses through the adoption of a cleanup greenup ordinance, in addition to the solar program, which we'll discuss today. And we're working on replacing aging fossil fuel infrastructure with clean energy technology. And a special thank you to Council President Nuri Martinez for leading all these efforts. We are now focusing our outreach and engagement efforts in the Northeast Valley alongside our partners. Leading our effort is Bacoima Beautiful, along with the Trust for Public Land, Grid Alternatives, LA Conservation Corps, UCLA, Community Partners, and the City of LA. We have won a competitive grant from the California Strategic Growth Council. And a special thanks to Wells Fargo Foundation who has been supporting our work in the Valley since 2018. Today, we are joined by a panel of experts led by Council President Nuri Martinez, LA DWP General Manager and Chief Engineer Marty Adams, Permit City CEO, Jonathan Port, and Pacoima Beautiful Executive Director, Veronica Padilla. After we begin, I wanna know that you can type any questions you have into the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, and we will, re we will relay them to our participants uh, after the presentations. You will be able to access the recording of this workshop after the event on our website at labusinesscouncil.org. To kick off the presentation, I'd like to now introduce a good friend and champion for clean energy and job creation, Council President Nuri Martinez. As Council President, Nuri Martinez has made a clear commitment to addressing inequities and in health impacts caused by pollution and climate change. Her first move as chair of the Energy and Environment Committee was to rename the committee to include energy, climate change, and environmental justice. She introduced her own version of a, of a Green New Deal agenda, prioritizing clean energy investments in low-income communities of color. Under her leadership, she has pushed the council and city to adopt and implement nationally leading environmental standards. For all of these reasons and more, the LABC was proud to present her with our 2020 Sustainability Trailblazer Award at this year's Sustainability Summit. Thank you. Thanks to her leadership and partnership, the state of California has approved millions of dollars worth of clean energy projects in the Northeast Valley. So without further ado, here is Council President Nuri Martinez. Thank you very much. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you for having me, uh, Mary, and thank you for bringing us together for this workshop. I think we've done this before and we've been doing it in person in Van Nuys and I kind of I definitely miss those days, but we're here virtually. So I, I'm glad you brought us together. I just wanna thank you and your entire team for not only bringing the business community together, but you've also been very instrumental in making sure we bring in the nonprofits, government and some of our residents um, as well to learn more about this, uh, this program. And I know we also have our general manager, Marty Adams from DWP. Thank you, Marty, for being here. You're a huge, huge advocate for this program. You and your team have done a fantastic job. And my good friend, Veronica Padilla, who's also on the virtual meeting, leading the effort on environmental justice and making sure that community is not left behind. She's the um, executive director of Pacoima Beautiful. So I, I appreciate all her help. 
and also uh, Perma City Solar, who I am very grateful, Jonathan, for all the solar installation you've done, not only in my district, but throughout the San Fernando Valley. And partners like you are very, very important. For those of you who do not know a little bit about my district, I represent the, the sixth district on the LA City Council, which is uh, pr pretty much the Northeast San Fernando Valley. I grew up here my entire life and I live in the community of Sun Valley. And, you know, when you come into our neighborhoods, you will see us surrounded by, uh, you know, a number of freeways. Uh, you see the number of landfills that used to exist once upon a time. All these incompatible land use uh, decisions that were made almost four or five decades ago. And then you have residential right across the street. So we've grown to uh, sort of live with some of this stuff. But I think for some of us who choose to still remain in this community and raise children here, we're very committed to ensuring that environmental justice um, is something that we lead with so that our families are not longer no longer being exposed to some of the harms that some of these industries uh, produce. And in doing so, we've done an amazing job of making sure that our voices are heard, not only at City Hall, but we're organizing at that level. Um, some of our communities have the highest asthma rates in the state of California. And during this time of COVID, you will see um, the communities of Sun Valley and the communities of Panorama City and Van Nuys and, uh, and other parts uh, in Pacoima as well, you would see that our COVID numbers are, you know, three times what they should be. Because people who are essential workers live here, so we're grappling with a lot of, you know, underlying health conditions because of the environmental uh, conditions that we currently live in. And so it's not a surprise that these COVID numbers are where they're at. Um, and it's not a surprise that some of our small businesses are having to do uh, with very little during these hard times. And it's not a surprise that our families are having to choose between going to work and staying home with their kids or having their hours reduced because they have to make that tough decision. These are all things we're all grappling with. And I certainly understand the business community and property owners who are also facing uh, very, very difficult times. So I am very appreciative of you guys all being here. And I also want to say that we do have a history of, of making this work. I think our, some of the, the, the stories that some of you will share uh, during this uh, workshop will be, for example, ZBAC, uh, which used to be a facility that used to store dirty diesel trucks, is now an industrial park uh, with solar power and clean fleet. Uh, we've seen it generate more than 2.8 megawatts of solar energy into this community, something that the, uh, that the polluting facility of the Valley Generating Station would not be able to do. Uh, we've also seen Mary and Pacoima Beautiful team up on our $25 million Transformative Climate Communities Grant, which is very uh, was, is going to be an incredible uh, asset to improving the conditions of people who live in this community. We'll be able to increase solar, um, power, solar power in our neighborhoods. We're going to also make sure that we are addressing some of the ongoing issues to green our infrastructure, to create uh, clean and open spaces for our children to play. Uh, we're going to be able to expand our, you know, our cycling um, enhancements in the area. These are all things that other communities perhaps take for granted, but they've been something that this community has been waiting for for many, many years. So we're very grateful to that. Mary, you touched on a Green New Deal. And we have our own model of the Green New Deal, or I should say our own version here in Los Angeles. And that is that we start with the very communities who have been organizing around environmental justice, that we get to these neighborhoods first, that we get to the very uh, businesses that are on this workshop today, that we get to you first. That's the Green New Deal, is to get to these neighborhoods that for a very long time have been dealing with environmental justice issues. It's about time that we try to address some of their concerns and turn things around so that their children um, grow up in an environment very different from when I was growing up. So thank you once again for allowing me to share a little bit about my district. I look forward to working with you and leading the way in the, in the San Fernando Valley so that we can ensure that the Northeast San Fernando Valley is some as a place where not only do we welcome, uh, you know, uh, businesses like uh, uh, Perma City Solar, but that we're also investing in our youth and making sure that we're creating those green jobs that we desperately need in this neighborhood. So thanks again for asking me to welcome you all. I hope that you all ask a lot of questions and get all the answers you're looking for. Everyone's gonna be here on the call, making sure that all your, your questions are answered and that we are getting back to you as soon as possible. We want you to invest in our neighborhoods. We need you to lead the way. 
And we could not do it without people like Marty at DWP and making sure that team is fully supported by the city council and myself. So thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you, Council President um, Nuri Martinez. And um, not just for everything you did as a city council person and all the good work we were able to do and still need to do, but for being the first woman council president in Los Angeles, the only woman on the LA City Council for a long time. And God knows what else you'll be next, but I hope it's only more leadership in your future, so. Well, let's get through the pandemic. Let's make sure we all survive. Let's make sure we're all taking care of one another and making sure that we're there for our families. Um, I have to jump off this call only because I have my daughter waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sort of the principal, the teacher, the janitor, and the cafeteria worker sometimes, so. Well, thank you for that's your time today. Okay, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right, good luck. I'm now pleased to introduce LADWP General Manager and Chief uh, Marty Adams and the LABT, uh, LADWP solar team. Marty, uh, as you know, was unanimously approved to lead the department last year and has since been a champion for clean energy programs, environmental justice, and leading the tripling of the FIT program, which we thank you very much for uh, last December. He's currently overseeing the department's LA 100 initiative to transition LADWP to 100% renewable electricity by 2040. The feed and tariff is part of that program. And we really appreciate Marty's attitude and the fact that he's uh, quite easy and accessible to work with. And we're very happy you're with us today, Marty. Thank you very much, Mary. Can you hear me okay? Yes, excellent. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, so first of all, I wanna thank uh, you for having me uh, join you here today. And uh, certainly wanna thank LABC and uh, see my good friend, Adam Lane and all the others there that have done uh, such a fantastic job in working with us on trying to push out the entire FIT program throughout its, really its entire history. And certainly wanna recognize uh, Council President Nuri Martinez. Uh, you know, she has such a passion and, and commitment to this area and to the communities that she represents and that she grew up in in the San Fernando Valley. And I hope uh, all the folks who are listening understand that you do have uh, a real representative and a real leader at City Hall who's really, uh, really the force behind uh, making sure that we do a good job of this and that it works to really serve the community. I know Veronica Padilla, who the executive uh, director of Pacoma Beautiful is on as well. Nice to see you, Veronica. And, and my good friend, Jonathan Port. Uh, Jonathan is uh, from Perma City. He's, as the uh, council president said, he's done a lot of work in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, creative guy, a guy who's solution oriented and who's really looking to make the FIT program work, not just from a business standpoint for a business like his, but from a community standpoint to see how it can benefit the residents of the San Fernando Valley. So I wanna welcome everyone on the call today um, and really ask you to think about, you know, what's next for you in the energy future? If we wanna really turn the corner in Los Angeles, we wanna become green, we wanna, we wanna be carbon free uh, and, and, and renewable energy by 2045, um, we have a lot of work to do. You, you, I know you've all heard about big programs like large solar installations in the desert, um, wind energy coming in. We just actually signed up a new wind project in New Mexico of all places. So getting further away from, from ground zero here in Los Angeles. But if you look at, you know, it doesn't take much looking around LA to look how many rooftops there are and how many flat surfaces could handle solar panels and how even though we're already the number one solar city in the United States for three years in a row, we had a gap in there that we had three years prior to that. Uh, we want to stay number one. But, but besides just being the number one solar city, um, we need local generation. We need, we need local rooftop solar to become part of our energy mix. We cannot rely entirely on large you know, quantities of energy coming in from out of state. We, we get energy from the Pacific Northwest with hydropower up on the Columbia River. We get we get energy um, from Utah and from Arizona. And, and a lot of energy comes from a long way away, even within California. We need enough energy also generated here within Los Angeles. And of course, we don't own enough city property. There's not enough park space or open space or any kind of space, even that we, if we wanted to, to put solar on it, um, you know, to have the kind of energy capacity that, that we require. So, so what we need is your space. We need rooftops. We need, uh, you know, places that, that the 
that, that private citizens or businesses or companies own so they can participate with us in the solar future of the city and really in getting enough energy to meet our local energy needs and provide a different level of reliability by creating energy right here under our feet, not relying on always energy that's brought in from hundreds or maybe thousands of miles away. And so, um, so it's very important that we, that we really push participation in this. I hope that you'll find something in today's conversation that's of value to you, that, that you will make you think, you know, I can participate in this. Uh, with us today, we have Greg Sarvis. He's with our LA uh, DWP Clean Grid LA team. He's an electrical engineer. He manages a feed and tariff program. And he's part of the, the, the group that the team that here that's behind all the community-based solar, utility scale solar, as well as the FIT program. And, and Greg knows all the ins and outs of how to make this work. And then you also have, as I said before, you have Jonathan on board here who uh, has it from a, from a private company standpoint of how to connect these pieces. And so I hope that you'll learn something today, that you'll have a lot of questions, that you'll be able to, uh, you know, see how you might be able to participate with your rooftop in the future of Los Angeles and LA's energy independence. So thank you again for joining us today. Mary, thanks again for having me on board. Um, I have to duck off to a mayor's meeting. Uh, so um, I maybe at least I'd Council President Martinez has child care, so I may be better off. But uh, uh, but anyway, thank you for having me. I'm leaving you in great hands with the team that's here today. And uh, best of luck. I hope it's a great seminar. Thank you very much, Marty. And um, Greg, we'll be coming back to you for a presentation from the DWP. And it would be great if anybody on right now could use the chat function to tell us if they would like the DWP uh, presentation translated in Spanish as well. If you indicate that in your chat function, we will do that during Greg's presentation. But first, I want to introduce Jonathan Port, CEO of Perma City. He has turned Perma City into one of LA's leading solar energy design and installation companies. Some of his priorities include the world's most powerful solar rooftop in San Pedro, and most recently a 2.6 uh, megawatt project in Council President's district, which he just talked about, ZBAC. Uh, which opened last year. It will generate enough power to offset a thousand homes in LA. Perma City has been a shining example of how to incorporate local communities and workforces. Jonathan hires locally. Jonathan partners with local labor and training programs for veterans to work on renewable energy. Today, he is going to present some of the shining examples of FIT projects and the benefits for property owners of engaging in them. Jonathan. Unmuted. Thank you, Mary. Great. Anyway, um, I think Adam has a picture of, of Sun Valley projects to show if that's going to be brought up. There you go. Great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to like to thank Councilman uh, Nuri Martinez and, and her office. A big thanks for their stewardship. They really have uh, LA and, and Sun Valley in mind. They're really looking to make some very positive changes for all the residents. And then working with Marty and his team um, are really giving just amazing leadership like we've never seen before in LA and how to make this transition away from fossil fuels, but also how to include us Angelinos in the change. Um, right now, right now we, have, um, we have about 150 people working on our current projects, um, both downtown and in the Valley. And the unions, uh, we are, we, our construction company has gone union and the union has made provisions for a lot of upcoming people to, to join, especially in, um, in both labor union, carpenters union and, and IBEW. So um, there's a really good pathway for those Angelinos looking to, to improve their situation and have a career. Um, this is an example of, of, of an average size roof. And this is for a company called Zbeck. They, they first started, this, this was the first project for them. We're now building two more with two more planned. The, um, and the ones we have under construction right now is we have one uh, that's over an Amazon distribution center and another one's a warehouse. It's, it's more in the uh, Central Valley. There's two more coming. One is gonna be for a, a, an expansion of a motion picture studio, which is great. It's a non-warehouse. And there's an, and another warehouse. In addition, we're starting to retrofit the manufacturing plants um, all modernizing it in LA in LA's view to be both uh, non-carbon and, and modernize our, our real estate. But let's, let's reach back out. There was a question um, from uh, Carnet 
I don't know if he's still here, he said he had to leave. But for the small roof owners, uh, Permacity, we invented our own technology. It's patented and, and, it, and you can get permits in LA. We make that available to other companies and we're also sponsoring the growth of small companies. We were, well, we're still, we're not the large, we're, we were a small company once and we grew up through this whole process. Um, What's exciting right now is we did start, we were a small company when we did the first LAUSD projects. And now after, uh, and now LAUSD is coming back and they, they've committed to doing the whole school district. So we do encourage all owners to jump on. There are decent economics, good economics for you. It can, it can help, it can, if you net meter, it can lower your bill. If you participate in the fit, it can really help LA. And not only is there, is our company can help you, but there's a number of companies that we, that use our technology, that we sponsor, that we help, Latino companies, um, other minority companies, and we're all here really to transform this environment. So um, let's see, Adam, you got the next picture. I think I'll just, we were gonna give just a quick view of how, how simple our technology is and how it can retrofit people's roof. I think that was from our website link. We're gonna stop, I'm gonna show you just a really quick 3D, some people, think that going solar is difficult. Um, we had a, a technology breakthrough that resulted in about 10 patents and our own building code that makes it really, really easy. It's been used on the LA Convention Center and um, many other projects. Adam, are you able to present? I think it's coming, okay. Yeah, so we basically reinforce the roof and it restores the, your roof completely intact. And then it's basically three parts in the module plus the wiring. And that's how we build all build all of our systems. Um, I got to say, it was very difficult about five years ago, but thanks to this system, it, it makes it really easy and really cost effective. So again, I'm Jonathan Ford. I got a whole team here to help you, and we have uh, other companies that use our product that can help you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and now, uh, and, and you're staying for a Q&A, correct? Uh, yes, I, and big thanks to Mary and LABC and Pacoima Beautiful for the amazing work you guys are, are doing out there. This is, it's such a team effort to kind of retrofit LA, right? Every roof should be solar, no one should miss out, and we're all together recreating our environment for our children. Well, Jonathan, that's from the person with the most expertise with the first 150 megawatts. You had to have done half of them or more. So <laughs> thank you for continuing <laughs> to participate in this program and doing such a good job with it. Um, Jonathan's innovated the feed-in tariff in many different ways, depending on, um, uh, but you have to talk directly to him about how he, uh, he presents that. But right now, it's my pleasure to introduce Veronica Padilla. She's our partner. She's the CEO of Pacoma Beautiful. She's here today um, to, to participate in the Q&A. Her organization, which um, Mary Martinez was also talking about, is a grassroots environmental justice organization that serves the Northeast San Fernando Valley. We've had the pleasure of working with her all the way back to, I think, Clean Up Greena, right, Veronica? I think, yeah. So, um, and, yeah. Uh, and the importance of that is that, that these programs make a big difference. Um, it's about uh, making the valley healthier, cleaner, and um, uh, robust economically, bringing new jobs and opportunities, which is the whole city would like, but particularly Pacoima deserves, given it's had a disproportionate amount of uh, power generation of the old kind, like the new kind. Um, so uh, uh, she is our partner uh, for the TCC grant and she's our leader in that. And we will be working together for the next five years, Veronica, on um, realizing our goals of bringing more clean energy. And over the last decade, um, you know, uh, Pacoima Beautiful has really done a lot on the solar energy program, energy efficiency programs, restricting drilling in frontline communities, reducing our city's reliance on fossil fuels, and ensuring equity and sustainability investments. So you fought for your community and you're gonna conti continue to, and you're now also a commissioner on the LA Department of City Planning. So please welcome Veronica Padilla. Campos. Thank Hi you, Mary. Campos. Okay, welcome. Thank you, thank you for that lovely introduction and, and and i'm with you jonathan we should all have solar on our rooftop um and just a, a quick little clarification i don't i no longer sit on the planning commission i recently moved out of the city so i had to resign 
but I'm um, still very proud of the awesome project that we got, uh, that we moved forward. Um, I was there for five years, but uh, still serving our community. Uh, at Pacoima Beautiful, as mentioned, I am the executive director of Pacoima Beautiful. We are an environmental justice organization, been around since 96. And even though we, our, our name has Pacoima, we really do service the entire Northeast San Fernando Valley. And we strive really to bring these much needed resources to our community and advocating for the health and well-being of all of our residents all of its residents. And this program that we're talking about today is exactly the, um, the type of, has the type of goals that we, we want to strive to reach. So it's really a pleasure to be invited to speak today and really be a cheerleader for this, for this project. Um, you know, especially as California and the city uh, seeks to achieve its climate goals, it's critical that, that the most impacted uh, communities like ours that has been impacted by pollution share in the benefits of this transformation. And we've been talking a lot about the, uh, the Transformative Climate Communities Grant or TCC as we like to call it. And you know, this really funds development and infrastructure projects that achieve major environmental health and economic benefits uh, in the most disadvantaged communities, which the Northeast Valley is. So I think there was some, some question like that in, in the chat. Um, well, TCC has this unique place-based strategy for reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and it's designed to catalyze collective impacts through a combination of community-driven climate projects in a single neighborhood. And in our project area, it is Pacoima and, and, and Sun Valley. So in these five years, uh, you will see projects such as this one being um, implemented. You'll also see over 2,000 trees planted. You'll see paving of sidewalks to allow folks to more easily walk, ride bikes, and just be able to be outside and get to places easily. We'll be improving two local parks with multi-benefit um, multi um, in these parks. Uh, we will be bringing an electric dash bus line to the community, and we'll also be installing solar in many of our homes while also improving their rooftops. So it's really, really exciting that all these projects are really meant to reduce greenhouse gas emissions significantly over the, this five-year lifespan. And we hope that it doesn't end after five years. We're really working to leverage other additional funding sources so we can continue really creating this, uh, this transformative com community. Um, Sorry, I have another call coming in. Let me decline that. Um, sorry. So the LADWP FIT program will really allow property owners and developers to sell the output of local eligible renewable energy projects directly to DWP. So for Pacoima Beautiful, we feel this effort is doubly important because it increases solar in the areas and reduces the need for fossil fuels. It cleans our air over time and at the same time creates better paying jobs for our local residents. It's exciting to be able to offer this program now to multi I mean, to multifamily um, developments. I think that's, that's a new thing, right? And so it's really exciting to be able to bring that to, to apartment buildings. And the community itself is helping to identify these projects and we encourage uh, local businesses and property owners to to sign up for the program. And just to kind of finish up, I wanted to really show my, say my appreciation to DWP's commitment in this program, but also uh, as been mentioned, our council president who's been really supportive and really understands the needs and is a great champion for, for advocating for these great transformative projects. So thank you again for, for allowing me to be here and I will stick around in case there are any questions. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you. Um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Greg Sarvis and Justin Ailman. I'm not sure if Justin's with us today. And um, there are two members of the Distributed Energy Resource Program team that Marty Adams indicated earlier. They're responsible for making it work and they work hard on, um, uh, they worked hard to expand it. And we really appreciate your being here today, Greg. And please, Please join us and make your presentation. 
All right, thank you, Mary. Uh, yeah, that's just me today. Justin has the day off. Um, thank you very much to the LABC, who's always been a great partner of the Feed and Tariff Program. Um, we couldn't have gotten the, the 300 megawatt expansion that we, we pushed through city council last year uh, without your continuous help. Um, can everybody see that screen that I just put up? If you wouldn't mind letting me know. Someone not, yeah, I see some nods. Okay, so like, like General Manager and Chief Engineer Marty Adams said, my name's Greg Sarvis. I'm an electrical engineer in the Clean Grid LA division. So we're the part of the team that is uh, trying to figure out how we replace all of our traditional power sources with things like renewable energy while maintaining a reliable and cost-effective grid. Um, the feed-in tariff program is obviously the focus of today's workshop, but I am gonna highlight on a few of our other local solar programs that are critically important to achieving our goals. Um, and like Council President Martinez said, a lot of our, these goals come from LA's Green New Deal, which uh, Mayor Garcetti laid out first in 2016, and then the new version of that was in 2019. Uh, the feed-in tariff program is just one of one of our one component of our strategy to achieve all of those goals. Um, our, our local distributed energy programs create demand for green jobs here in Los Angeles, and also create additional revenue opportunities for businesses. Uh, in, in Los Angeles. We're also doing our LA 100 study. Uh, and so when we generate renewable energy here in the city, we make more room for wind and solar to, to import from outside of the city uh, that supports our goals. That LA 100 study will be, will be done next year. Uh, we're excited to share the results of that and figure out what investments are necessary to help us achieve 100% renewable energy in the city by 2045. Uh, and also making disadvantaged communities the first beneficiaries of those benefits. Um, so for our local solar programs, LEDWP has had a local solar program since 1999, and that's led to Los Angeles being the number one solar city in America, six out of the, the seven last years. We have more solar here in the city of Los Angeles than in any other city in the country. And our strategy to retain this title is a combination of both residential and commercial programs. So the feed-in tariff program, which is the subject of today's workshop, has about 70 megawatts in service uh, and another 90 megawatts, which we have under development. So this is for a total of 200 megawatts, which is currently authorized and, a, and 450 megawatt total program that city council has allowed, given us some runway to develop further. Uh, the net energy metering program, this is our most popular program. This is mostly made up of residential customers, but also commercial customers. Um, we're seeing a 20% increase in solar in Los Angeles year over year. This one is what we'd recommend you first look into. So this is the program where the solar panels are connected behind the meter to your electric panel and helps reduce your, uh, your energy consumption. As you take in energy from the sun, it either lowers your electric bill or your meter can run backwards and you can export that out to LADWP. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in just a second. We also have a utility built solar program where LADWP installs uh, solar panels on our own facilities and some other solar or other uh, city facilities. We have about 25 megawatts in service. Um, and, and that kind of ties into one of our community solar programs, the shared solar program in which you can subscribe to energy from some of those utility built programs. That's, that program is open to residents and multifamily uh, homes. You go to our website, ledwp.com and you can fill out an application to subscribe to blocks of energy and lock in your, your electricity rates at the solar rate for 10 years. Uh, and then one of the other community solar programs that we have is our solar rooftops program. And this is a case where LEDWP will come out and install solar panels on the roof of your home if you qualify. And in exchange, we receive all of the energy that those solar panels uh, deliver. So this won't affect your bill, but instead you'll receive a check up to $600 for the year. And that depends on the size of the electric system that we're able to install on your roof. Um, so for any of these programs, check out our website, ladwp.com solar for more info. And you can even sign up for most of them on that website. So I told you that I would talk a little bit about the net energy metering program. Here's a simple graphic that explains how it works. You install solar photovoltaic panels on your roof. Uh, it connects to your existing distribution system with an inverter. Uh, and then as they produce the energy, your meter will either register less energy being consumed by your house, or it can even run backwards. So we take out your existing meter, put in one that can 
go in two directions. And for the energy that we receive, you receive credits on your bill. And these credits can be used to offset future energy charges from another bill. So this is a program that is open to both residential and commercial customers. So I would recommend that you first seek out a net energy metering system. Um, on many businesses, you can, you can offset your electricity consumption, but then there is still some remaining rooftop space that otherwise doesn't have economic potential. And that's where, where the feed-in tariff program really comes in. Um, let me not forget to mention that if you're more interested in the net energy metering program, we've launched a new partnership with Pick My Solar. So you can visit marketplace.ledwp.com to learn more about that. You type in your address and someone will call you back. They get bids from multiple companies and, and help you do some of, the, uh, some of the research for you. So the feed-in tariff program, this is one of the ZBEC projects that Jonathan Port mentioned earlier. This allows you to turn that unused rooftop space into a renewable energy power plant and a guaranteed revenue stream. Um, many businesses can, can do a net energy metering system and then use the remaining rooftop space uh, for a feed-in tariff. So under feed-in tariff, that's directly connected to LADWP. It's a separate electric system from your current meter. Uh, we purchase all of the energy. We offer, fit, we offer fixed contracts for 10 or up to 20 years and you receive monthly payments for the energy that, that goes to LEDWP's grid. So the minimum size for this program is 30 kilowatts. Um, in normal people speak, that's probably around 2000 square feet. If you have a rooftop of that size, you may be eligible for the feed and tariff program, all the way up to 10 megawatts, which uh, this facility I think was, was two or three megawatts, uh, multiple rooftops combined. A 10 megawatt roof is a very large facility. Um, we can do multiple connections uh, if you happen to have more space than that. So a quick overview of the, of the feed-in tariff program benefits. For a property owner, like I mentioned, you can, you can monetize your underutilized asset in that rooftop that's sitting there idle. Um, we offer contracts up to 20 years. It's a guaranteed bankable revenue stream. You can go to our website right now and look at the, the power purchase agreement that is a boilerplate non-negotiable agreement, you can go take that to help with financing. Um, and you also help Los Angeles achieve 100% renewable energy. The energy that we receive on the grid helps us reduce our reliance on traditional sources of, of power and helping clean the air here in the basin. And you also help increase the reliability of the local grid. So these systems can, can reduce our reliance on the infrastructure that has to import energy from far away and that helps us keep the grid healthy and up. And we can do it in a cost-effective manner without needing to upgrade our infrastructure, even as people add electric vehicles and other types of, of uses of electricity. Um, I did mention that it might help you with financing. However, we see a lot of arrangements where the property owner has to put no money down. Um, you can often find developers who where you lease the roof to them and, and they will develop the system uh, in exchange for the payments or a portion of the payments um, this is often, often a deal of three. The solar developer um, is, is helping to create local employment opportunities, both in the development of the facilities and in the operation and maintenance of them for their entire lifetime. Typically, we plan on them being in service for 20 years. Uh, you also have an opportunity to, to expand your, your portfolio from the developer's perspective and put solar on, on types of roofs that maybe have been underserved by existing market opportunities. And you also have the ability to, to get tax credits on this. So in the commercial space, uh, we currently are seeing 26% if you, that's commercial and residential, you get 26% uh, tax relief. Next year, that will drop down to 22%. And then in 2022, it'll be 10% for the commercial space only. Residential drops down to zero. So time is of the essence. If you're thinking about going, going solar, there's never been a better time than now. Uh, I'm gonna go through some of the feed and tariff program very quickly and break my cardinal rule about not putting too many words on a slide. Um, please don't try and read everything. Oh, that's the next slide. Uh, I mentioned 200, 450 megawatts has been fully authorized by, by city council. That gives us plenty of runway for this program is going to be offered for many years in the future. And it's currently open to all renewable technologies. It's not only solar, so we are also see um, some renewable natural gas can, can be used uh, to generate electricity and could be eligible for this program. Um, 
please give us a call if you're thinking about any other type of generating facility and um, we'd be happy to talk about the details. And then finally, the price is down below. This is specific to, to solar panels. Um, a facility that's greater than three megawatts, we pay three, 13 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. And the smallest systems, four, but that's below 500 kilowatts, uh, 14 and a half. Everything in between is 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, here's the one that has a lot of words on it and I'm gonna go through this briefly. Um, the, the beginning of, of the process is you, you find a site, if you're a business owner, you obviously know where the site is. If you're a developer, you go out and secure some sort of site control. You have a conceptual design, you submit that with the application to us and we'll verify that, that the grid can support it in that area. In most cases, this takes us about two to four weeks to go back and forth. Um, sometimes there are, there are minor corrections that are needed to your application and we're happy to, to work with you and make sure that we have all the information that we need to move forward. As long as that, uh, that process has been completed, then we will go forward and do an interconnection study. So this is where we go and assign a design engineer to look at the specifics of your property and the specifics of the infrastructure at the grid and do a, a, a rough order of magnitude estimate of what it's going to cost. Um, this is designed to help you make a business decision at that point of what additional costs there's going to be on the interconnection, which must be reimbursed. Uh, at that point, if you want to go ahead and continue with a detailed design, you put down a non-refundable deposit, which is 10% of the estimated interconnection costs, and an engineer goes and produces all of the drawings that will be necessary to move the project forward. Uh, at the same time, we also execute the contracts that I mentioned were on our website. There's an interconnection agreement which governs the, the equipment and how it will operate. And then a power purchase agreement, a standard offer power purchase agreement, which we call a SOPA. It's the same for everybody, a non-negotiable agreement where you just fill in the specifics of your project. And that governs the, mostly the payments uh, and how, it's, how the project's going to be in service for the entire term. And then it goes into construction. Um, after you have the agreements and all the drawings, it's, it's up to the project to be built. LADWP has a little bit of a scope there. The developer has some scope. We get everything interconnected and then you'll start receiving a check in the mail along with an invoice every, every month. Um, if you wanna know more about the, the feed and tariff program, please go visit our website. We have some information on there. We have a lot uh, guidelines, uh, but I also wanna highlight this dashboard that we put up every month, which shows how many projects we have in service and their capacity how much is under development, and, and very important is how many are, are currently remaining. So you'll notice on here, it's up to 200 megawatts has been authorized by our board right now. We monitor this every month. And as we get closer to there, we will bring the program back up for review to our board to authorize what is expected to be another 50 megawatts um, as, as needed. Like I mentioned, we have a lot of runway which has already been authorized by city council to enable our board to quickly add more to this program and adjust the pricing as necessary. Uh, you can also see where the projects are in the pipeline and, and see how long it takes to go through. Smaller projects can be done uh, somewhat quicker. It usually takes 12 to 18 months to see everything go through the process. A very large project may take two or three years. And we also, you can, you can see how many applications we have received in the, in the process and how many we have commissioned. Um, there's been a bit of a lull right now as we had a lot of applications come in about a year ago. And so we're getting excited to see a lot of projects go into commercial operation very soon here. If you have any more questions about the feed-in tariff program, we have three ways that you can contact us. Um, the first is our website, ladwp.com fit, which I talked about just a second ago. We also have a hotline where if you have any questions via telephone, you can call us at 213-367-2100. And either myself or a member of our team will be there to, to help you out. And then we have also an email inbox, which we share, fit at ladwp.com. Uh, and we'd be happy to follow up with any other questions. And Thank I think you, Greg, that was a terrific presentation. We really appreciate it. So I, I, I pulled off a couple of questions so that we can start with our panel. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Jonathan. Jacqueline Wagoner from Enterprise has a question for you. And that is, um, she'd like to know, well, first of all, she said, thank you. She thinks it's great that you share your technology with other companies, and she wants to know um, 
how you assess the health of a roof and, and do you possibly replace roofs when you do your installations? Jonathan, we can't hear you though. Jacqueline, very good question. Um, the answer is yes, all the time. So we often uh, either go down ourselves or we send a roof consultant down. We core sample the roofs and we assess if it's willing to, if it can, because solar panels are good for about 30 years or more. And then we assess to see if, 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 if there's an alignment there. If there's not, then we, 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 we either uh, repair the roof or we replace the roof. Um, and Jonathan, uh, I think when she asked you about, do you replace, will you replace the roof as part of the installation? Oh, yes. Yeah, we do that all the time. Yeah, we our, our funding allows us to replace the roofs. Yes. And then she has an additional question about expansion. If you, if you put in a roof, you put on the solar, and then you expand an existing uh, space, will you add additional solar to that space? Why not? Well... <laughs> I knew you were going to yes. say, which gets to a question for Greg. Greg, what's the minimum size of a FIT project? 30 kilowatts is the minimum uh, capacity, and that's about 2,000 square feet. Would you agree with that, Jonathan? Yeah, plus or minus. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so if you roughly have a business with that much reusable roof space, um, you might be a good candidate for feed and tariff. And then, um, Greg, a question was, um, does this apply to school districts too? School districts are, are eligible. The tax credits might make that a different situation. Um, but any, anybody who's within the city of Los Angeles is eligible for the feed and tariff program. We also have a little bit of capacity, I believe two megawatts, which is available for the Owens Valley portion of our service territory. Okay, good. And is there a plan to include storage? There is a plan to include storage. Uh, we're calling it the Feed and Tariff Plus, Fit Plus program. And that's currently uh, in its final stretches of development. We should be presenting that to our board for approval in the first quarter of 2021. And um, do you have any plans, Liz Goldman's asking from PCS uh, regarding vacant land that requires the CUP? Uh, is there any plans to remove that? It's, so currently, you must have a, a CUP, a conditional use permit, to be able to, to be part of the feed and tariff program. So there is a master conditional use permit that covers most rooftop systems. Um, that comes from the city planning department. The vacant, vacant land is a different question. Um, they will review it one by one. So you can participate in the feed and tariff program by getting a conditional use permit specific to your site. Uh, but you'd have need to have that conversation with planning. And Jonathan, Clyde Williams asked in this in the Northeast Valley, um, is the Northeast Valley considered low income and and is it eligible for fit? Of course, yes. Every, every, every everywhere in Los Angeles City is eligible for the fit. And the work you've done in the Northeast Valley to date, could you share a little bit more about that? What do you think the potential is? Oh, well, when I originally started Perma City, like a long time ago, I thought that 60% of the, I thought that all of LA's, that LA's power would be 60% provided by the rooftops, if that tells you anything. So we have a lot of, we L, LA City is a very spread out city with a lot of, um, large rooftops and, and there is uh, more capacity in the rooftops than this program. I think Greg would probably consider that right. So I think, I think the, I think it's a, it's a big program and it's a generous program and it's open, but there, there are, we have a long way to go with our rooftops. So you think it's tremendous potential? I, I think, well, you know me, I think every rooftop should have solar on it. One, it DWP wants the power. Thank you, Greg. Two, it 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 when we did when we built the first Costco in Lancaster, it actually it actually saved 50% more power by cooling the space down. Um, so the building actually uses less air conditioning. Three, it it prolongs the life of the roof in ways that that uh, people are now starting to understand. So 
there are some amazing benefits by installing solar on, on roofs. It becomes a, uh, a, a very large asset. And I think Zbeck is a really good success story. We're now moving on their sixth project in LA. It's part of their redevelopment program. Um, they're the first customer to actually, we actually worked with to really get it, understand it, and it's integrated and it's, 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 it's redeveloping and reshaping these uh, warehouses in Los Angeles. So I think we have a long way to go and I think it's really exciting and, and we should all participate. Um, Leslie, um, Leslie uh, Purcell, uh, Greg is asking, why are solar tax incentives ending? You could also answer that, Jonathan. It, that is set by Congress, so it was it was set initially to incentivize the um, the industry. As prices have gone down, the idea was that it would the tax credits would also go down to kind of keep the the price economical to to generate enough activity. Um, Congress may extend those; they may do that do it just for storage. Um, I'll I'll leave your political predictions out of it, but. That, oh. that, that's where it comes from. It's from the federal government. Well, very excited that we have the first woman in the White House, right? Yes. Right? So, and very exciting that Kamala has such an amazing background and such a big heart and drive for the environment. And um, I, I think, I think she, I think there's an opportunity to work with her. Not only that California now is represented in Washington, but that the, if you look at the job creation and in LA that we've created these really nice paying jobs as we redevelop our city that we should, that I think we want to propose that the tax credit gets a little up for at least what we call the in basin solar, right? The big job creators. Um, the, the challenge with solar, it's kind of slushed in this bucket of residential, commercial and utility and, and solar is a mature enough where they've all gone different paths. I'm sure maybe Greg can help us with that. But but the the fit solves a really big need. It's creating really good jobs and it's creating a lot of power, right? A uh, thousand homes worth of power in, on Zbeck, 5,000 homes worth of power we did in San Pedro. And it's really supplementing the DWP grid at the same time as providing these amazing jobs. Maybe Greg? Yeah, I mean, it, it helps us bring an important source of, of federal tax dollars here back into Los Angeles. And I, you know, if you're supportive of policies like this, write your congressman. So Greg, tell me, is DWP working to deploy more solar on affordable housing complexes? I'm getting two kinds of questions about affordable housing complexes and about how nonprofits can uh, provide benefits to their tenants. Uh, kind of the community solar uh, question. Could you yeah, so both our, our shared solar and solar rooftops programs are designed to target areas of low, low solar penetration, which we've seen are, are generally low income and disadvantaged communities. So we, we do gear those programs toward there. In addition, we're gonna have a, a new program coming up next year, the virtual net energy metering program, VNEM. Um, and that is designed to kind of tweak the fit model a little bit where instead of just giving one check to the developer, we will give multiple checks to the, to the tenants. Um, so often it's, they're unable to build economical uh, net energy metering systems because all of the tenants in, in those multifamily residences are individually metered. So the VNEM program will allow a building owner to install one solar system with one meter and will divide up the economic benefits to the tenants. Great. And um, that's great because I think we've been advocating for that program for years. And I think tenants were getting the shared community space benefit. But you're right. It was very difficult to figure out how without the net metering to get it to the inter individual tenant. Um, Jonathan, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, given that you've done so many feed and tariff um, projects, um, in particular for the, for the Northeast Valley, the multifamily projects and the warehouses, of which there are quite a, a bit. Um, the, the types of projects there tend to be smaller, right? Can you talk a little bit about the economics of projects that are more like 200 uh, kilowatts and 250 kilowatts versus some of the larger projects you've done? Yeah, well, that's how Perma City got started, right? So our first project was 
a 12,000 square foot roof, our first commercial project, right? right. We built about 2,000 homes in LA before we did commercial only. And, um, and that was about 100 and 112 KW. That customer has bought four systems. They've expanded their business. They put it on every business. And that was our first customer back in 2003, I tell you. Um, so solar doesn't really discriminate. It's just really the cost and the logistics of building it. And then our technology doesn't discriminate, meaning it goes on any type of flat roof, whether you build one solar panel or thousands of solar panels. So often when we build multifamily, it may be a, sometimes we, we did a megawatt system, but it was, let's say it was eight different buildings with, right? And that's where it comes down to really creatively working with LADWP is how is that going to be actually interconnected in a cost-effective way? So, um, uh, and then, so like grid alternatives there, we actually, we're, we're actually been supplying equipment to grid alternatives and they've been building multifamily. Um, so we built some multifamily, they built multifamily. I, again, I think, I think, I think all roofs are really good candidates for, for solar in Los Angeles. And is there a way a building owner can assess the capacity of their roof to know if they should consider this program? Yeah, so most solar companies will, will give complimentary capacity estimates to owners. So when we look at a project, we will give a complimentary assessment. Here's what you can do if you participate in the feed-in tariff, if we finance it, here's what it looks like for you. If you wanted to buy the system, this is what it would cost. So most solar companies will, will do that complimentary still. And if you yeah. want to get hooked up with one of those solar companies, let me plug that website again, marketplace.ledwp.com, where you can type in your address and it'll actually estimate the size of usable roof that you have based on the, the sunlight that's on it. And they will connect you with, with up to three companies. That's terrific. Oh, except I don't think we're on there, Rick. <laughs> It is, not, it is not every solar developer, uh, but you can you can reach out, I'm sure, through the LABC and, and reach some of the members here in Los Angeles, too. Okay. Great. Veronica, can I give you the last question? Sure. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll okay. mute it. So, Veronica, you've been working on this for many years. How do you think the community feels about the solar roofs and the clean energy? I think they're really excited to have this opportunity and I think I should turn my camera. I think that this is something that they've been waiting for and they and it's exciting to be able to have a program that allows them to be part of it. I recently got solar in my house and I just it's just been such a blessing and I'm excited that LABC and you know, works to provide this for so many more other families. So it's just, it's great. And we're, we're saving our environment, we're saving our families money, and it's just, this it, is great, so thank you. Yeah, no, I think so, Veronica, and all I can hope is that we'll be able to do this in person next year, because we're kind of missing the, the interaction in the, in the community center hall, right? But I think for now, this is great. I want to thank everybody for participating today on this workshop. And this is one of many. And then next year, um, God hoping or a good government hoping we'll have uh, a vaccine and a well-organized um, way to uh, do work during COVID where we can meet with each other again. So um, have a happy Thanksgiving and please feel free to send your questions to us um, and on our website, this entire workshop will be posted. We'll also do a blast. I think everybody, we have your presentations. So feel free to come back and take a look and, and, and think about this some more. Okay, thank you all today. Thank you, Jonathan, Rachel, and Adam. And, and 